right, we are live and recording. So thank you everyone uh, for joining this quick presentation. Uh, my name is James, I'm one of the co-founders of Intube. Uh, we're very excited to share with you a brief introduction today on what Intube is. And then our CTO, Stephen, will walk you through how simple a hello world is with Intube. The goal here really is to get you from zero to one, to, to really understand what it is that, that Intu has built and how to use it. And then secondly, just reinforce this fact that you can get up and running with Intu in a, a very limited amount of time. It's very, very simple to do. So with that being said, I will jump straight into it. Um, first and foremost, why did we build Intu? And I, I think it's common knowledge that accounts in Web3 just are not fantastic. They don't do a lot of the things that we expect them to do. And most of that is tied to this idea that private keys are static. And Web3 is probably one of the only digital environments where the expectation is to have one secret, one password for the entire life of your account. Your bank will ask you to reset your password every couple of months. In IoT, you refresh credentials on a frequent and regular basis. But for some reason, a Web3, when you're holding your bags or your digital identity or whatever it might be, the expectation is that you have this one password forever. And this idea of static private keys really limits developers in their ability to provide end users, to provide their users with the experiences that they expect, right? With this human first Web2, this is easy, this makes sense, this is intuitive. We can't get past that without, without better infrastructure. And so that's what we've built with Intu. If EOAs, if your standard 0x, ABC, 1, 2, 3, hardware wallet, browser extension wallet, all the way up to smart contract account abstraction and MPC enabled networks, a lot of that, it, it still kind of feels like dial up, right? It's clunky. It's like streaming video before broadband. And I think everyone's still waiting for that YouTube moment. And so really at its core, what Intu is, is this next generation infrastructure that will enable those better experiences by empowering the developers to build them. So the end result of Intu, the end result of our protocol is still a static public address, right? This is a persistent identity, just like you're used to, your 0x, ABC, 1, 2, 3, but no more private key. And so we've gone ahead and removed that and replace that with dynamic private keys. If you're interested in learning more about how that actually works, let us know on Discord and we're happy to walk you through it. So end result, externally owned account, EOA, as far as the network is concerned, it looks like it's coming from a normal account, but no more single private key. And because this computation is done off chain, that means that right out of the box today, day one, you have broad compatibility with existing networks, with existing dApps, existing protocols, Right, and a lot of flexibility how and where you deploy these into accounts. You don't need to worry about a DAP updating their version and breaking your protocol. You don't need to worry whether or not a consensus or an EIP is going to get adopted by the network, right? This works today and it's backwards compatible and it will continue to work tomorrow, right? These are the fundamental building blocks of Web3. EOAs are not going anywhere. And so Intu, by providing you with what looks like an EOA, means that you can use it today and you can use it forever. I think most importantly, it's the fact that this infrastructure, it's, it's empowering developers to improve usability, right? You can achieve so much with this kind of dynamic infrastructure, but without forfeiting control of your user experience, right? We, we don't have any vendor dependencies. You don't need to connect to an API. There is no API keys. There is no token. There is no specialized hardware. There is no network that you're connecting to. It's just the SDK and the blockchain. You can build this directly into your browser-based application, into your mobile application, to your desktop. And you can now do things like one-click onboarding without needing to bring on multiple vendors. Right? Every time you bring on a fiat on-ramp or a proxy payment system or a social login system, you are forfeiting control of your user experience to that vendor. And if their workflows change, so does your user experience. With Intu, because we're infrastructure, you still retain full control of that. You can really build it specific to the purpose of your application. 
the the expectations of a DeFi degen are very different than a Web3 gamer are very different than an NFT collector. And so we don't try and define that for you, we really empower you as developers to own that experience and deliver what you believe your end users really want. And so last but not least, right, the, the protocol allows you to really define everything, right? This comes through a lot of flexibility in how you go ahead and implement it. Um, that means that you can now have flexible ownership and custody models, right? You can do one-click onboarding and have a pseudo custodial service to offer customer service long-term. You can do things like subsidized payments so that all the transactions are gasless. You can set up custom account recovery kind of situations or protocols. And then also, right, one thing that is, does not exist in Web3 today, but we're excited to keep pushing and introducing, it's this concept of proactive security, right? If, if you are creating important things that are associated to your end user, right, a digital identifier, a credential, an NFT, something they paid for, right, something they don't want to lose, the, the longer a private key is in use, the more likely it has been compromised. With, with Intu, because these dynamic keys are now dynamic, you can actually proactively secure the account, extending the livelihood of it. Right? You can use an account for a decade and not worry that you've had some shady transaction 15 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, that will compromise all the assets that you're holding in that account. So moving on, this is a gross oversimplification and it's you know just a, a high level overview and the anatomy of an Intu account. Right. So the participants in an Intu account are <clears throat> identified using existing Web3 accounts. This is a Web3 native protocol. So every participant is expected to have a public private key pair. Uh, we do not force any specific type of wallet or client. You can build this in directly into your application. It can be on mobile. It can be on desktop. You can host it. It could be associated with a hardware wallet. It could be a paper wallet. Right. It makes no difference to us. And then, so these EOAs, then they are signed, our dynamic private key shares, right? So this is, this is happen this happens automatically. This is all done by the SDK. As a developer, you don't have to worry about this. And so then once you have these dynamic private key shares, we go ahead and use them to form threshold signatures, right? So you have a custom threshold. You can set that to, in this example, three out of five. And you can form valid ECDSA signatures for the Intu account, which then is broadcast to any Web3 network, starting with EVM compatible chains. And then from that point on, it just behaves like a normal externally owned account, right? Nothing different there. And again, gross oversimplification, but looking at it from a more holistic standpoint, the way that this works. So Intu has two components. We have a smart contract system and we have a software development kit. Like I said before, this SDK gets built into your application, whether it's on mobile, whether it's on desktop, whether it's hosted, and you can really build this directly into your application. Once it's there, you have the ability to create and provide your end users with into accounts, or you can use it to power a protocol, right? You can now build additional tooling for other developers to really make use of this you know, new dynamic, this new mental model that is private keys are now dynamic. We can now share ownership. We can now remove someone from an account. We can add someone to an account, right? And then plug that into, like we said before, any Web3 network. We do this by touching on a lot of the super cool advanced cryptography. So if you're interested in this, we'd love to chat more again on Discord, but this is all achieved by using secure multi-party computation. The threshold signatures support both ECDSA and BLS. The dynamic part comes through key resharing. And the storage and communications are all handled with our own encryption protocol, which allows us to safely store data on chain without requiring end users to store any additional data, tokens, passwords, et cetera, right? And this is all just an SDK and a blockchain. A few closing comments before we get to the hello world on dynamic private key shares. So you can increase and decrease the quantity of participants. You can custom define how many are there at setup. And then that number can change over time. You can revoke old key shares, right? So unlike some of the things that you might see on crypto Twitter, you can actually revoke these key shares over time so that old key shares don't work for new signatures. These key shares can be assigned to any externally owned account, any EOA for now, but we do have support coming for biometrics, passkey, and social soon. 
So the idea is that just like in the real world where you have different credentials for different situations, you can use the convenience of biometrics of your face ID to go ahead and initiate a transaction, but then you can also have the security of your hardware wallet. For proactive security, you can also revoke and issue new shares for existing participants. So that means you don't want to change who is involved in the Intu account, but you can remove everybody's old shares and give everybody a new one. Therefore, if some or, you know, if there potentially some of those key shares have been compromised, you don't have to worry about them compromising the integrity of your account moving forward. Um, and then lastly, you can customize the thresholds over time as well, right? So as the needs of the account change, you can go ahead and modify these as you move forward. So with all of that being said, I'd like to hand the microphone over to our CTO, Stephen, for a quick hello world so you can see how easy building with Intu is. And if you would like to see more documentation, docs.intu.xyz, fairly straightforward. So Stephen, I will stop sharing and hand it over to you. Awesome. All right. Thank you, James. So what I've done is create an extremely bare bones app to show how simple it is to get started with Intu. This is just a Create React app with Ethers pulled into it and the Intu uh, SDK. Uh, as of this call, 0.2.4 is the latest. Um, that will increase to 2.4.1 probably here in an hour or two. So regardless, uh, we pull in Ethers and we pull in the Intu SDK services that we're interested in using. Documentation can be found at docs.intu.xyz. Uh, we've got everything up here that you need to get started. Down at the bottom here is core functionality, which is these exact functions I'm using with the inputs and outputs required for them. Beneath that is administrative functionality, which is slightly more advanced to be later if you want to propose any threshold changes that other people need to vote on. Less cryptographic and more just administrative for the account. So I'm just going to be sharing some of these core functionality functions. So, sorry, trying to find my place here. Here we go. You'll, of course, do a provider setup and get the signer that's connected to your DAP. That's standard. You can then use the get vaults endpoint to see if the user has any existing into accounts or smart contracts that they're a part of. And the output for that is all this information that's related to the um, vault itself. So if they don't have a vault or they want to add a new one, you just call the vault creation endpoint. And so you'll see my simple form over here where I've tossed in some user addresses. We're using EOAs to, you know, maintain the participant list, an easy to use name. For instance, this might be an account I create with myself and Max and James, and I would call it myself, Max and James. And then you can set your thresholds, mess those up. But these thresholds are percentages that you uh, set to <laughs> require that percentage of people to perform a signature, for example. So if there's three of us uh, a part of a vault, Less than 66% will mean that only two of us need to sign for that geez, <laughs> uh, combined signature to send that off. Over 66% will mean all three of us need to sign. We're doing max rounding there. In a more advanced DAP, I might grab those three users and perform a quick calculation so that your user could potentially type in the number they want. So maybe two, and then you could perform the calculation on the back end um, for that threshold of people. Cool. So once the vault is created, you can then interact with it um, with just these simple calls here. So it's like pre-registration performs all the cryptographic functionality needed for that user to pre-register. That involves creating their encryption key that they'll be using with this DAP, as well as some very base cryptographic info. As And then all the following steps perform more cryptographic work. And you just need to click them. We detect the address of the person using it and do all the work on the back end. So it makes it extremely easy to get going. One thing I'll call out though regarding these registration steps and why there's so many, 
is that in the process, each person is providing a little bit of cryptographic information. And we can't move on to the next step until we've reached a quorum at that level. So if everybody's done register step one, we know that we have enough data to move on to step two. And after step three is performed, we then have our keys that we can use and sign with. Yeah, so goal would be to chop those steps down, but at the moment that is the amount required to create a key safely. If we were to do it with a single dealer, steps would be less, but we have a huge security risk there of one single person doing everybody's work. And that would not be safe for the other participants in the vault. Cool. So I wanted to show a little bit of what's going on behind the scenes there. You'll see in register step one, what's actually occurring. This is the Lisbon Protocol SDK. We are, it's not everyone, but these functions are the WASM Rust code, like compute Peterson dealing. So we're performing these on the back end with the information that we gathered just from you interacting with that endpoint and then pushing it on chain for that user. So yeah, just trying to share here, heavy lifting's occurring on the back end. All you need to do is call the function and we put a lot of work into that to make that super, super easy. So yeah, I think that's it for me. Yeah, that's my demo. All right. Thank you, everybody. I just want to call out also that the, the SDK is currently in production audits, which means that this is very, 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 very close um, to what will be live on mainnet. And our, our expectation is that the SDK and Intu in general will be live and available for you to be building and launching your products a little bit later this year, right? Most likely in the third or fourth quarter of this year. And so that's why we're moving to an open beta and we are encouraging everyone to, to build on into. So if you're interested, if you have questions, if you want to learn more, join the Discord server, come talk to us and just know that this isn't something that is being built. This isn't some pipe dream. This is happening and this is real and this is available for you now. And we're here to support you guys. So please reach out, please be in touch. Thank you so much for your time. And we look forward to seeing everything that you can achieve with the Into SDK.